It's as bad as it gets now. Thousands upon thousands trapped. Behind them, the Taliban in front, soldiers having to decide who stays and who goes. Nobody planned this, it's just how it is. The hours are counting down and they know it. There are no good options left to them. Stick this out, try to get the family through and onto a flight, but risk failure, or go home and await whatever may happen at the hands of their new masters and hope it's not fatal. This is absolutely awful. Such is the desperation to be heard by the soldiers, the would-be evacuees are standing up to their knees in a sewage-filled canal. The stench is indescribable. Some have been here for days. Remember the heat, the lack of water, the lack of food and the conditions they're in are a cocktail just as lethal as any bullet. When they can identify people with the right papers to travel, they're pulled from the canal. It's a deep and sheer wall, the soldiers and the strongest stooping down to grab their families, often huge extended families, and out of the water. They emerge dripping wet but relieved. That nightmare is over. It still, however, doesn't mean it's about to get any easier. This is just the point where their right to travel will be considered they can still be rejected. The numbers of tiny children enduring all this is heartbreaking. It must be so, so scary. It's noisy here. There are gunshots and shouting the whole time. And what does this little boy think? Sat in his father's arms, protected from the sun by an umbrella, an occasional stroke to comfort him. That's all his dad can do, really, just comfort him. Well, there's a real sense now that people are beginning to expect that this whole airlift is coming to an end and they're really, really desperate. I mean, they're in a sewage canal. They're trying to show their paperwork, trying to show that they perhaps should be looked at. It's really desperate. That is actually the sort of pretty much hopeless column, we're told, but I can see all sorts of passports from different countries. The fact is that when the withdrawal happens, it's always going to be difficult because they can't keep working. The soldiers can't keep working up until the last minute. They have to start withdrawing in the days leading up to their departure. How are they going to deal with these people when that happens, we just don't know. The Taliban are relieving the pressure on the process because they're stopping people coming now. Those aren't foreign special forces, that's the Taliban special forces, more heavily armed than others, and now slowly taking control of the Paris processing point. Beyond the British lines, they direct the human traffic from above. There's no choice for the soldiers. This is the only way things can get done. And the soldiers are absolutely exhausted. Inside the walls of the compound, they grab a few hours rest. They aren't working shifts. These boys have done two days and nights in a row. They're absolutely wiped out. They'll be back on the barricades in a few minutes. They will never forget this strange, unexpected tour of duty. A lot has happened in a short period of time. Um, but people have sort of risen to the challenge, accepted what's been put in front of them, and we really focused on the importance of recovering the, the, uh, the entitled personnel, doing their mission, and doing it for a good cause. And, and of course, your soldiers are very young, a lot of them, right? This is not something they're probably ever expected to do. No, I think that's a fair comment for many people at any age. Not many will have seen scenes such as this. But again, driven by that real sense of purpose, um, they've actually absolutely been committed to the task um, and we'll see it through to the end. And so this process goes on. It matters what is discussed and agreed thousands of miles away. But until someone says it's over, they'll keep trying and keep hoping. And that's all they have left. Stuart Ramsey, Sky News, Kabul.